Hey everyone, it's Torment here, and I got some more Mario Kart Wii custom check races for you guys today. I messed around with my BRCNs before I started to record, so now I have custom music playing between the interval Start Your Engines. If you didn't know what part of the song that is, it's actually that way before Lactical starts its countdown. Don't know why, but it kept driving me crazy not having music playing in that part. So anyway, the first race is going to be on my favorite custom track of all time, Haunted Woods. I think I picked this track as my favorite because it's very lightweight friendly, and there's tons of turns that you gotta navigate your way through, and obviously the tighter you make it, the, the better the results, and if you didn't notice by now, the BB, which I mean the bullet bike, excels in taking sharper turns than the mock bike and flame runner, so ultimately results in me gradually catching up to any fast combination anybody can be using. Plus I like the somewhat creepy scenery as well. I'm very fortunate to get thrown into a 10 player room off the bat because the more players, the more chaos. Sega ends up getting a little confused and heads the wrong way, which means I'm gonna be in first, but it doesn't really matter as Rhapsody just shrooms and pushes me into the grass. Now I attempt to take the broken shortcut with the TC, but I completely forgot hearing it a few seconds ago, so the game is not gonna give it to me. And look at this the rest of decided to not hit me and hit Joshi instead of me. How lucky was that? The shock thwarted two players from taking the ultra shortcut and they decide to dive into the creek which means I'm gonna maintain my second place. Very smart move actually, you don't want to get stuck in the mud so early in, you might as well dive off and get respawned back into the course. I actually intended to jump over that ledge but Rhapsody already summoned the bat so I'm not gonna. Now I'm gonna go over this little cut again. Don't do what I just did. It's actually quicker if you just jump into the grass, go straight, then turn your bike. Don't turn your bike while being in the grass. Do it after your back wheel hits the ground. It's faster that way and you'll see on the third lap. I don't really know why I do that there since that Joshi isn't that close behind and my wheelie fails to register here, which is no big deal. For insurance, I drop my wheelie the moment I'm about to hit the boost panel so I can jerk my bike a lot quicker. I always get targeted there, I don't know why. Whoa, four people taking the ultra. See, now I'll do it the right way, just jump, keep on going straight, and turn your bike when you're completely out of the grass. That's much better. Now this is the part where I get confused. I saw the chain shop in the distance, and I immediately thought it was like around the corner, so I purposely headed into the grass to slow me down, but it turned out to be on the other side. And now that I think about it, I don't think I could get to this side, so fearing the shock or another blue, I don't intend to try the TC method of taking the ultra. I'm just gonna take the normal route, better than safe and sorry. Oh, and taking the TC to do the ultra. Whatever you do, no matter what you do, I will never take you all the way across. I'll shock you a few inches away from the boost panel. But it's definitely worth it, especially in 150cc. And that's so stupid how that happens, how the shell just lands in front of you like that. And of course, a blue. Well, there goes my first place. Oh wow, he's actually still behind me. I can't fail this mini turbine, I have to make that little creep jump at all costs, I want to beat him. But it doesn't really matter because he strangely failed somehow. I was actually wondering if he still done on purpose because I would have won normally if it wasn't for the blue. I definitely did not get that gesture going over. I actually played back that little clip to try to figure out what happened, but I can't be too sure. Now the next phrase is an unnamed valley with 12 players in it. A very short custom track indeed and falling at least one will pretty much guarantee you a bad position so try your best to stay on the track. Luckily I'm starting in the front so I'm not that worried of getting bumped off through the beginning at least, being a lightweight and all. I purposely never check off the first ramp. I definitely check off this one though, it would be foolish not to. 
Being a lightweight means that I'm gonna be hanging around the air longer than other heavier combinations. So people are effortlessly gonna catch up to me by just driving normally. A good example was when that George stepped on my banana. See how he already was like on right, my tail. So I'm still first, and notice how long the first lap took. 27 seconds, so try your darn is not to fall off. Damn you, popped our man. Well, it could have been worse, right? I lost some speed because of that fiasco, so I'm gonna check off the first lap, which I normally don't. Ah, bomb! I know exactly what I'm gonna do with this thing. <laughs> ah, jeez, damn. Shame. Hi, popped our man. Who's in fun? A funky con. I was actually trying to predict which ramp he would go off of, but I get unlucky. Yeah. Of course, he would go to the same one I predicted him not to go. Well, I'm gonna get a bad position for sure now. Now I go for Nada to try to make a quick recover, but the Joshi goes for the same item and he gets triple shells while I get triple mushrooms. So I bring in front of me, I'm just gonna spam it to get away from him. Man, that guy dies. That guy dies. I use the power out of desperation. Yeah. Yeah. Seemingly looking at a fourth place, I managed to get a last second drift from the fungi and I managed to pass the two guys in front of me, getting myself a second place after falling down to who knows where. Damn, I think that's pretty solid. Now this race here in Ascendia Castle was just full of bull- Three different things happened to me in this race that has never happened to me before, and you'll see why. Anyways, off to a normal start. Probably should have aimed at the middle ball just to get a little leverage. Minor error there, but a bigger error here because I went and drifted the wrong way. Now Axie on the Funky Kong is gonna get ahead of me. Tried throwing him two banana skins his way, but I missed. And I keep a final one behind me just for a little insurance. I try sniping him once again with my final skin while he swerves a little bit to the right and trying to hit me with his flip but we both fail in our endeavors. Again like a pro I'm gonna shift my bike to the left going off the ramp and it's again the wrong way. Here comes Fen on a Funky Kong and he's just gonna wheelie butt me. Which is no big deal because it's only the first lap. I'm just gonna toss this skin just for the hell of it. What the? Well that was fortunate for me that green show just dissipated like that. Cruising into lap number two, the gang's all pretty close by. They're all racing pretty decent. I don't have a single clue how I'm gonna tackle the two funky Kongs on this course. Fender there, trying to create a wall. Good attempt, good attempt. I'm constantly double checking the map so I don't end up drifting the wrong way. In comes unnatural phenomenon number one, going off the boost panel, I end up hitting the very edge of this structure here and it acts like I just hit a wall, forcing me to come to a complete stop. And I don't even know what happened to Fencer, but apparently he's suffered a worse face than I just did. So now I'm in second place and the Joshi behind me fires off three green shells all at once. Now I spot Axia ahead of me and then he just disappears. I do not know what happened between him and that 90 degree turn, but hey! Very bad luck for someone holding a bomb to this point, and I die a little inside every time I see a lightweight doing standstill mini turbo, especially on the BB. Like, really? Give that guy a strategy guide. Oh my goodness! Unnatural phenomenon number two and triple red. What are these gonna do on this stretch? You see, lots of matter to obscure the red shell's path and long strays to lengthening impact. It's just so unfair. Now going into the final lap, the leader is not that far away from me and I have a decent breakaway from the rest of the group so if I just drive normally and take the faster route only available in lap 3 then item management is all I'm gonna have to be worried about. Turn here, avoid the banana and turn here and avoid yet another banana and uh oh. Oh! Damn me on natural phenomenon number three! That just sealed my chances of winning. Shortly after that fail, I'm just gonna go grab an item and up! Oh, some random debris just decides to crap on me. Now because I dropped in speed, someone's gonna be all evil like and shoot right into me despite the two green shells revolving around me. Gotta love how most of the walls on custom track have like their own gravitational pull. 
I'm on virtually at the very back of the back and I pull triple shroom. Not much I can do with these now, so I'll just spam them in between. And of course I'm gonna take the faster side up here. Definitely wanna get an item box. Totally hit that trick button there, but I guess I pressed it too soon. A shame really. I mean come on, that's one of the advantages of going up to the upper path that you can trick off the boost panel and, and come out of the cannon with a boost and a single red. Oh boy! I launched the red in combination with the pal to maybe get lucky. The shark doesn't really matter to me at this point. I mean I'm already at the back. And what do you know? The red actually hit somebody. Whoever it was, it does matter because said person is gonna fail once again up here. Ha <laughs> fuck. And there you have it, fifth place. Yeah. The last race for you guys is gonna be in a quad jump stage, 150cc with nine players. And Sydney Castle did not go my way at all, so I'm here right in the middle of the pack, which kinda sucks because I'll probably most likely get dragged into the water by everybody taking that first turn. And of course, the funky car. Didn't really mean to trick here because of the boost panel, but it's whatever. Try going for an item back there, but get somehow sandwiched between the funky car and the daisy man. Jeez. Master that little second so I won't be crashing into the wall anytime soon. Of course, I hit the stadium being so light. A nice throw by life there with that fib. <laughs> Hugging the wall as close as I can to bypass the two pipes like a boss and because I can. Kenji here now pulls a TC and he could have easily passed it to me through this hall or should I say lag pass it to me but he decides to keep going forward. Well he missed his opportunity with me and I was trying to figure out what the hell he was doing so went around like that but it doesn't matter now does it? <laughs> and life? Why would he check off of there? There's boost panel directly beneath. I'm just gonna pass him. Now look at this, I pull a green, high rascally by the way, and I decide to drag it along for protection and something strange is about to happen. It just disappears and clobbers the guy all the way in the back on top of the ramp. I'm like, wow, like to the extreme. It really sucks hitting those pipes, don't intend to squeeze through them unless you have like excellent coordination. It's even easier on the BB too. <laughs> Although having said that, it's even easier to squeeze through both of the pipes instead of trying to go through both of them. In comes the power and I really can't tell if I can get air boom before it takes effect so I'm gonna hit the wheelie button anyway and I kinda wish I didn't because of the fact that it's gonna make me trick and it's gonna give me a very awkward approach of getting off the water which will result in that Yoshi dramatically gaining on me. He's like directly behind me at this point. I get preoccupied trying to hit him with my items and I completely negated the tilt down which ends up me hitting the wall and falling to the other side. Darn. Well there goes my chances of winning. Once again, I'm gonna hit the ceiling for no reason, and why did I chuck that forward? I should be throwing them backwards to secure my second place. I don't get anybody in the way, surprisingly. This red gets thrown at me, and at the same time, I can hear a blue swerving towards the Joshi. Now I'm looking at the minimap, and that blue show is indeed gonna matter, but look at this. Kaboom! After that blue shell incident, Rhapsody passes me and releases his mini turbo and then wheelies, okay? Now there's clearly nothing in front of him and nothing hits him from behind either but somehow he drastically sways behind me for a good few seconds for absolutely no reason whatsoever leaving me to believe that he did that on purpose which is coincidentally quite hilarious to me because I go by this code which I completely made up by the way that if any racer who gets punished by a blue shell which ultimately results in that person not getting first because of it and I take the lead, if that same person can maintain second place by the end of the race, then I would purposely wait for said person on the line and let him grab first because in all fairness he really did deserve to win. Yeah I know blue shells are part of the game blah blah. There are some exceptions to my rule too but the major one being it has to be by a single spiny shell. If more of them get launched throughout the race and targets other targets, then it's just fair game. 
Anyway, I believe that's what Rhapsody did for me back here, which totally caught me off guard. And even if he didn't, I still would have waited because of my code. Now I slow down as planned, and I panic a little because of the pal. I really don't intend to get anything below second, and the pal just barely pushes me over the line. <laughs> I'm out of here, guys. Thanks.